The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mian Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public and the themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all you need. Looking at a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and even love and endorsed by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the MikeWidenerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Pond, Bean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. And her worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas like T-shirts, hoodies, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, and a lot more. Great gifts year-round for your loved ones. Just go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And coming soon to the MikeWidenerShow.com. And for more great gift ideas, including pop sockets, hoodies, also phone cases, and more great gift ideas. Go to Amazon.com and check out me and most and Zia's missing. And once also, go to the me and most and Zia store and Amazon.com. Make sure you check out today. And also, 
Please support the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com with your generous donation. Also support us on Anchor FM slash support. Also go to PayPal slash the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you give and make sure you give generously. And don't forget to um, support your local artists, your local shows, and everything else. Well, speaking of support, we have a wonderful gentleman who basically is a Billboard Top 10 recording artist and Music Row country breakout charting songwriter. And, of course, in American Roots Music, and he's... um just been all over the place and he's um, a top independent artist as well. He's won numerous awards, including two Grammy certificates and also inducted into the indie music hall of fame recently. And also he's um, appeared in, um, in, in, uh, in the, uh, the indie film called uh, Oildale in Bakersfield, California, and also just um, starting off with an amazing career. And he's got some great music like Man of Steel. Also, I See You, I Reckon and More. And also has got a book and album out as well, too. We'll talk more about that called Appalachia America Stories. And live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Rhode Island in his wonderful recording studio where we're making out the great hits. Ladies and gentlemen, Grammy Award and award-winning singer-songwriter, very multi-talented and a true legend, Grant Malloy Smith. Grant, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks so much, Mike. It's great to be here with you. Thanks what's great? To, what's great to have you on board too? So, your Billboard Top Ten Recording Artist and Music Row uh, Country Breakout Charting Songwriter of American Roots Music, and you also won numerous awards, including two Grammy certificates. You also been inducted into the Indie Music. Um, Hall of Fame recently, and you also appeared in Oildale film in Bakersfield, California. You also got a new book, new album coming out called uh, Appalachian American Stories. And of yep. course, uh, that one spent 17 weeks on the Billboard charts, including 11 weeks in the top 10. You also got some great songs like Man of Steel, I See You, I Reckon, and more. And of course, you know, you support a lot of causes, you support um, indie music as well, too, and just an amazing story. And before getting to that, Grant, tell us how yeah. you got started. Wow. <laughs> that sounds pretty impressive. Even I didn't know I did all that oh, stuff. I was going to say, I was going to read off a King school, but I don't know if I have time to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It sounds like I must be very tired after all that stuff I did. <laughs> tired? Never. But we'd love to hear it from you, though. So, <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah. As you, as you mentioned, I got a new record coming out. Uh, my previous one, Dust Bowl American Stories, was like, like you just said. I won't repeat all that, but it was on Billboard for a lot of weeks. And now I'm hoping that the new one, We'll have some success, too. It's kind of a follow-up. It's called mm -hmm. Appalachia American Stories. Like that one, it's a theme record. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's set in the world of Appalachia, you know, the, not the mountains where you are, but the ones on the east, eastern side of the country. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's kind of where my family's from, from, from both sides, my, my mother's side and my father's side. My mother's side more down in eastern Kentucky in that area, the, what, what is really the cultural part of Appalachia, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, some people call it hillbillies. Mm -hmm. That's okay. A lot of coal miners, a lot of lumbering, a lot of you know, stuff from back in the day. Mm -hmm. But uh, my father's side was more from up in the northern Appalachia. But uh, I'm really looking forward to playing this when we can go out and do shows again. You know, it's mm -hmm. been a year, more than a year since I've been able to do a live concert mm -hmm. in front of re real actual people. And, uh, <laughs> like yours truly and everything else. So without the Zoom. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, I like to... I don't mind doing these interviews. It's great on phone or on Zoom or Skype or whatever. But when you play music in front of people, you should play music in front of people, I, I think. Mm -hmm. I know I do television sometimes, too, and that's that's OK, because I know people are there. But it's still not as much fun as when there's right there, you know, an audience right there, because you can feel the reaction to the songs and you just can't feel that when it, there's a separation of glass. You just can't. I can't see them. I can't hear them. I can't gauge their reaction. Uh, that's what music's all about, mm -hmm. you know, communication. Right. And, and of course, you know, going way back as well, too, we noticed that you were born in Jacksonville, Florida. You also went to school in Rhode Island. And, um, you know, tell us about your journey going from Jacksonville to Rhode Island to, um, you, you know, you've been through Appalachia. And, uh, you know, tell us about your uh, journey, including um, musical as well. Sure. Yeah. As you mentioned, I was born in northeastern Florida in Jacksonville. My dad was a Navy pilot, and that's why we moved around several times. We, we even went out to San Diego for a year where one of my sisters were born and we came back to Florida, mm -hmm. uh, but put the, to the panhandle near Pensacola mm -hmm. where my other sister was born. And then after some years there, uh, those were kind of formative years for me. That's when I started doing artwork and started doing music and a little bit of writing. Uh, then we moved, you got shifted again. We moved up to Rhode Island. That's, that's how I ended up here. 
Um, you know, so I, I'm kind of like a, a Southern guy, a Northern guy who's from the South, basically. I've lived both places and in California twice. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just, I like America. I like all of it. Mm -hmm. I've never lived in the Midwest or the Northwest, but, uh, or, the, or even in the middle, like between those two, where you are. But I just love, I've traveled everywhere in America, except two states, South Dakota and Alaska, but I'll get them before it's over. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and we'll make sure you get there as well, too. So it's like if we have to lasso and, um, you know, drag you as well, too, or especially get the motorcycle guys from Sturgis, we'll make sure we get you there this time. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long way on a horse. So I'll probably take an airplane or something. Mm -hmm. And of course, you talked about, uh, you know, enjoying uh, your time in the United States. What was your favorite place in the United States and, and why? Oh boy, I don't think it's possible to answer that because there's so many unique places in our country that are amazing. And uh, how do you, how do you, it's like trying to choose your favorite child. You can't, they're all different. They're all unique and you love them all. And it's just impossible to choose. It's a Socratic choice that I hope I never have to make. I, I you know, I wish I could live everywhere at once, but I can't <laughs> pick a place to live. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, um, you know, you also went to, um, you know, Rhode Island, um, you know, for school as well too, in the, um, the school of design as well too. Right. Then he went into music and um, what would you say, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing today? Boy, that's hard to say exactly. But even when I was a little kid down in Florida, you know, the Beatles were big and the Rolling Stones and all that kind of stuff when I was, when I was really little. And I just, that influenced me so much. At the same time, my grandmother from Kentucky and my mother also, she was playing me, particularly my grandmother was playing me American roots music. She mm -hmm. called it mountain music. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was kind of sounded old fashioned and boring to me, you know, cause I was six years old. I wanted to hear jangly guitars and guys with long hair. That was the exciting stuff when you're, you know, when you're a kid and when you're younger, but as I got older, I, I, I kind of went back into that music. So my grandmother planted a seed in my fuzzy little head that really took root in me later in life. I mean, it, it, when I was really maybe like 20, I was doing kind of rock and roll stuff. And then I, I think it just matured and grew into the roots music that, you know, is my roots. And mm -hmm. uh, I like it because you can tell stories in a way that's kind of hard to do in many other, not every other genre, but many of them. It's a real storytelling thing. And that's, I think that's what people like. People like to hear stories. They like to tell stories. They like to watch them in movies and TV and read them in books. We're all about stories, you know, and mm -hmm. the American roots and country, they're kind of interrelated and bluegrass songs, they're all really about storytelling more so than jangly guitars, although they're pretty good at that, too. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you got a lot of great uh, Americana that's out there right now as well, too. And who are some of your other favorite artists, singers, and musicians growing up besides the Beatles and the Rolling Stones? Well, well I started to like the the rootsy people uh, like that my grandmother played for me, you know, like like Hank Williams and those kind of people. That was real formative for me because he was a, he was really a great songwriter. Mm -hmm. He didn't live to be very old, unfortunately, because he got hooked on alcohol. But he was a great songwriter, and all, all those kind of people. Nowadays, it's more like the next several generations later, you have Allison Krauss and you have Vince Gill and Rodney Crowell and people of that ilk. Uh, Larry Cordell. These are great, great songwriters and uh, performers and entertainers. Mm -hmm. and we just lost John Prine about a year ago at this time, and yeah, I remember that. Uh, that was a big loss. Great, great songwriter like Rodney is, like Vince is. These are all great people. And if I could just be a little bit like them, that that would be that'd be enough for me. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you're certainly on a way to do so. You know, got some great music out there with um, Man of Steel, I See You and Reckon as well, too. And um, you also um, won numerous awards as well, too. We'll talk about those in just one minute. But first, listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at SoundWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Dia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Dia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target. 
where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and even loved and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Z. Available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be here on the Mike Widener Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. And heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. Makes great gift ideas 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, including hoodies, T-shirts, as well as um, phone cases and more, go to Amazon.com. Check out um, the Me and Molson Zia store. Check out great books like Missing, Once, and More. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Make sure you order today. Also support us greatly on the MikeWagnerShow.com. Support us on Anchor FM and PayPal and make sure you do so today. We're here with the very, very multi-talented, award-winning Grant Malloy Smith, singer, songwriter, Billboard Top 10 recording artist and music grow on country breakout uh, charting songwriter, American Americana, and also won numerous awards, including two Grammy certificates and inducted into the Indie Music Hall of Fame. And, um, it's you know, how people say, like, you win Grammy awards, you call them Grammy certificates. So it's amazing about that. And um, I, get, I guess you could say, you know, what's the difference really between an award and a certificate? But you could probably explain that one better than yeah. I could. Well, yeah, they're two, very, they're two different things, really. So certificate is, let's say you're on a record that wins a Grammy, you get a certificate. But if your name is like if it's your record, <laughs> then you get the, the actual Grammy statue. So oh yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Fun. <laughs> By the way, I want to show you something. I um, and for people that are that don't see the video, I'm holding up a record album, a big 12 inch, uh, 180 gram LP. This this record, Appalachia American Stories, is the first time I've made produced the record on actual vinyl. So wow. that's that's kind of cool. Mm. You, you know, vinyl's really coming back these days. You know, something too that um, I actually have some vinyl myself. Unfortunately, I don't have access right now. I've had those long mechanical arms. I could probably just, um, you know, <laughs> crank it up and uh, try to reel them in. But I think they're stored in a safe place right now. And my daughter recently got me, um, you know, Queens, uh, what was it, uh, A Day at the Races. And that was like oh, yeah. a, a nice gift. And I still have some albums from, oh, God. Like, I think I still have that one. Yep. One I my, bought it back in the 80s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and my parents, though, I have them from like the 50s, 60s. I picked them up in the 70s, 80s, and then it kind of just, um, you know, mm -hmm. petered out a little bit and then it started ma making a comeback. And um, I, I actually still had the original Patsy Cline greatest hits. You yeah, may right. have Snap, wow. Crack, pop and, pop, and all that. But then it's just like, it sounds a lot better than you buy the vinyl today. It's like the actual vinyl with all the snaps, the cracks, the pops, the skips. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you know, la, 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 la. And it's like that. You got to put a penny on or you try to just, you know, <laughs> you know, go back and forth, wrong speed or the thing just, just ends right there and says, please turn me over. It's like, <laughs> you just can't beat the original though, but I'm glad vinyl's making a comeback. You know, people buy, bought more vinyl records last year than they did CDs. Mm -hmm. Right. First time since like 40 years ago when CDs first came out. Uh, of course, vinyl was the way everybody bought vinyl. For the most part. And then there were some cassette sales too. Mm -hmm. And CDs came along and just took off and vinyl started plummeting. But now because of streaming, CD sales are have been cut like 90% from where they were maybe five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, but vinyl's making this huge comeback. So this record's all about old timey kind of stuff. I figured I might as well, I should produce it on vinyl. Plus I've never done it before. Mm -hmm. so it was quite a good good experience educational experience because it's really a whole different process than making a cd that's for sure oh really so 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 what is the difference you know you know making on vinyl of course cd you just you know put on a blank disc and everything but vinyls is like you know what, what's the process on that i mean this sounds rather interesting and i read something about uh, vinyls well too you had these certain cuts and whatever else and i thought you, yeah. you know you know explain the process of uh of vinyl well, because, this is very sure. fascinating because because vinyl is a you know, LPs are analog. There's no computers. There's no, you don't make the music into ones and zeros like you do for all, pretty much all other media like streaming and, and uh, CDs. So the music is still analog, like people are, we're analog. So you can't, 
just cut it with a laser like on a computer. You have to you have to make a lathe. It's basically a mold. You know how you make plastic parts? You make a mold and mm -hmm. then you inject plastic into them. It's similar. You make a mold which has the, the lines in it that are cut by a lathe. So they actually play the music into this thing that cuts as the as the as the lathe turns, the uh, the the thing cuts it. Wow. You know, like the, the thing rotates underneath and the lathe cuts it. It converts the sound into like little movements of this needle. Mm -hmm. That when you play it, when you then put vinyl in it and you put it into an oven and squeeze it down, it's like making a cake basically. <laughs> <laughs> so you print both sides. And then uh, it has to cool off, and they trim it, and they put it into this nice thing, you know, with a with a with a, a cover inside, it, you know, to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. But when you play it, it's like it's like the opposite or the inverse of that. So now you this thing spins around on your turntable, and you put a needle on it, which then takes the sound out of the grooves, and then goes through an amplifier, so you can hear it. It's sort of like the relationship between a microphone and a speaker. They're almost the same thing, but they're just kind of opposites. A microphone takes sound waves and converts them into voltages that move up and down, and a speaker does just does the reverse. It takes the voltages and makes them back into, uh, with the speaker moving the air, puts it back into the air so we can hear it with our sensors up here. That's fascinating because I like the way how you just, uh, you know, you know, took it as like making a cake. And then I tried to learn, you know, history of vinyls. Like they never mentioned it whatsoever. Now it's like, yeah, I think everything's all process. simplified these days, you know, thanks to social media, the internet and everything else. And it's so amazing. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. and it sounds good. Mm -hmm. you know, they, yeah. don't, they don't get the cracks in the pops till after you play them a whole bunch of times. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you also like got when some, we when we were kids, we'd play them a thousand times. Plus when you're a kid, you sort of, don't really take good care of them now. You know, as grown ups, so you put it in the in the nice sleeve and you keep the dust off of it and all that. So they oh they yeah, and of course you know you step on them, you break the cat would scratch <laughs> or whatever, or it's like you know you you put pennies on to prevent the skips. Or <laughs> I've seen some people that just you know spin them backwards and just to hear what kind of message it gets out there too. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we play with all that. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, yeah, some other great music as well too. We'll talk more about your um, Americana stories as well too in a minute. You also had "Man of Steel," which is um, the official song of uh, National Veterans Foundation, right. and right. Um, "I See You," "I Reckon," and um, just plenty of hits out there. And um, tell us more about those. And there's uh, other sure. songs you want to mention. Feel free to do so. Yeah, well, "Man of Steel," I wrote. You know, I was in an airport. And I met this young man who was missing a leg. He had a prosthetic leg on, a kind of modern one. He had lost it in, in the Middle East. He was in the military mm -hmm. and he got it blown off. And I started talking to him. The plane got really late. And so we talked for a long, like hours we talked. Normally you wouldn't get very deep with someone at the airport, right? But we were there for three hours. And finally, you know, I learned a lot about him and his background. And I was just so struck by his spirit. He had such a positive spirit, uh, even though he lost his leg and he's a young man. He said, look, I was in the military. You can say whatever you want about the conflict over there. doesn't matter. I, I, I serve my country. I'm not in charge of the politics. <laughs> I <serve my> country, <laughs> and I'm proud of that. And I came back here and now, now I'm going to go to college. I'm the first person to ever be able to go to college in my family's history. Wow. I served in the military. And that's what he was going to do to look at a college. Mm -hmm. But a week later, I got home and I just started, you know, when, when you write songs, you just sort of mess around on the guitar or the piano and you play some stuff. You go, oh, I like that. Then you work on it a little bit more. And I started writing a song and I realized very quickly it was really kind of about him. Mm. But not just about him. Uh, all the young men and women who serve us, you know, they go over and and again, it's not about whether the war is good or not. I mean, no war is good, obviously. Right. Yeah. And of course, you know, I talked to somebody about that and they said that, um, you know, interesting fact that, you know, someone said that we haven't won a war since 1945. And, um, you know, it's just like sometimes you wonder what's it for and everything yeah. else like that. But um, yeah. it, but it's not a, for, the, for me, it's not about that. It's about these people that, that serve and they like like the ones in World War Two, like in every war they didn't start it <laughs> they're not responsible for the war right uh, and like world war ii we had no choice about that one either fight or become you know join the nazis you, you know you want to lose all your freedom sometimes you have to go to war other times you don't but regard regardless of that the people that serve they deserve our our uh thanks they deserve our gratitude for the sacrifices that they've made for the chance that they've they've rolled the dice on their life they could easily lose it millions of them have and uh, or they come back grievously injured, like um, so many did during the Gulf conflicts that we've had. 
mm -hmm. because of the IEDs, you know, so many people injured, unbelievable, hundreds of thousands. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, they, and you know, they deserve our, our gratitude. They mm -hmm. really do. And of course, you know, going back as well to uh, Vietnam as well too, you know, Agent Orange, it really affected everybody, oh, yeah. you know, caused a lot of stress, you know, PTSD and um, trauma sure. and everything else. And all these things are now coming up here. What I'm really glad about is that the, uh, the National Veterans Foundation uh, heard the song and the, I made a video for it too. They saw the video and they decided they wanted to make it their official theme song. So it is the official theme song of the National Veterans Foundation, which is nvf.org. You can go there to their website. You can see the video. You can see what they do. They were the first ones that figured out what PTSD even was, you know, but it didn't even have a name at the beginning. Oh, really? You just thought that guys came back and they just went a little crazy. Mm -hmm. There was no name for it. There was no, they didn't, there was no diagnosis for it. Now we know what causes it, you know, it's mm -hmm. obviously this, this repeated stress from, you know, these, these people ex sort of like the police do, but maybe even worse. They experience things that we normal and I shouldn't say normal, but people in, that don't have those jobs uh, never experience, you know, you, they see things that we are lucky to never see. And they see it sometimes happen to their friends <laughs> right in front of them. Right. And uh, that takes a toll on anybody's psychological well-being. It has to. How can it not? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they need they need our care and attention for mm -hmm. sure. Feel, <laughs> if they come back with that, they need they need help. We got to give it to them. Right. And of course, uh, we also, um, you know, just, uh, you know, pray for loved ones and everything else. You also have, um, I see you as well too. That's another, um, chart topper, I reckon. And, um, you also got some more and, uh, tell us about those songs. And if there's some other songs, um, you'd like to mention, feel free to do so. Yeah. You mentioned, I see you. It sounds like I see you like the intensive care unit, but it's really like, I see you with my eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So that, <laughs> or <laughs> where that one came from. I was, I was actually, I was in Texas and I was in a mall. Uh, I was traveling, I was doing shows and I went to a mall because they have a food court. I could pick up some food quickly. And I was sitting next to these a table of really, really old people. They were all in their eighties or even nineties. And I couldn't help but hear their comment. They were sitting right next to me so I could hear them. I didn't want to eavesdrop, but I couldn't help it. And, and they were talking about what it was like to be older and, uh, and how people, how society looked at them. Mm. One, one beautiful old lady said, you know, sometimes I feel like I walk down the street and people look right through me, younger people, like look right through me. They don't even see me. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really powerful, you know, that people, that they feel felt invisible, that people just ignore the, the older people, just don't even look at them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wrote a song about that too, similar to the way the other song started, but with that inspiration from real life, from a real person that I met. And uh, so, so that, that song, like like the other song, was a was chosen by Masterpiece Living. Now, Masterpiece Living is a group. Uh, it's a big company that they do. They have rest homes. They have other kind, they, all kinds of retirement stuff. But more than that, they advocate for sort of like. Um, uh, so other organizations do. They advocate for the rights of of uh, older people, and also they they have a lot of knowledge about you know what they go through. Mad, like loneliness is one of the biggest problem of older people. Like mm -hmm. when they lose their they lose their spouse that they've been married to for their whole practically their whole life. Imagine how lonely that is, you know. And so that's a major thing to deal with. Sort of like the PTSD is for returning soldiers. Uh, and that's something they work very hard on. And, and try to educate people and try to, you know, help those people. So they, they chose I See You to be a theme song for one of their campaigns. And in fact, they even called the campaign I See You after the name of the song. Uh, because that is, a, that is an important thing. A lot of older people don't feel like people look at them anymore. Like they, they just kind of been discarded by society because they don't have a job anymore. They're not somehow not useful. But, you know, if you look around what, what's going on culturally in this country, I think we need some wisdom because there's a whole lot of idiocy going around in the United States. Oh right now. yes, we need the, some wisdom and some some people who have their feet on the ground because they've lived a life and they've been through the ups and the downs, and uh, they know what reality is all about. We we, sh we should listen to people mm -hmm. older than us. Mm -hmm. and, and do you think the social media has also caused us to um, accelerate more and, um, and and pretty much um, ignore the wisdom and everything? Or do you think it's um, on the verge of uh, making it better? You think social media has accelerated this or you think um, it's, it's becoming more, more of an encouragement? That's really, that's 
probably uh, above my pay grade to answer that. There might be uh, some measures of both in there. Uh, any, like anything else, it's a tool. Social media is a tool. It has the power to do great things. It has the power to do really terrible things. And I, I think right now it is doing both. <laughs> there are aspects of it that are quite good. For example, something like Facebook. When I, I first, like most people, first started using it maybe 10 years ago or so. And it was kind of cool because you could find like people you went to high school with, even though, the, how else would you find them? How else mm -hmm. could you possibly do? People move, they go all over the country, all over the world. How, how would you ever find somebody uh, before something like Facebook was around? So that, I think that kind of thing is a positive thing. It's, mm -hmm. it's good. But then, you know, you can see how it can also be twisted around and used for partisan political kind of stuff. And I'm not talking about one side or the other. I just mean it can be used to kind of amplify negativity. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm not a negative person. I don't so I don't like anything that amplifies negativity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and those kind of things do allow that those platforms allow it. Mm -hmm. And encourage it even. So, I mean, it has good parts and it has bad parts, like anything else. Mm -hmm. And also, too, with the song, I reckon as well, too, and uh, tell us a bit about that, too. And, um, you know, like I said, if there's other songs, y'all feel free to put them out there. Yeah, well, I reckon was a single I had a little while ago that uh, I, I recorded it in Nashville myself and, uh, and released it. It's about uh, a young man who uh, learn? it's kind of like the, the father-son thing where you learn from your dad and then you grow up and you, you then you kind of pass that down to your own child, your own mm -hmm. children and so on. So it's a story like that. And it's kind of a classic story. It's, I'm not the one who invented it, that's for sure. I just told it my own way. <laughs> uh, but that song was also covered by another country artist, Jeff Claiborne, and uh, he released it too. And it was actually uh, went up pretty high in, in the U.S. That, that was the one you mentioned, the music row. A country breakout chart it was it was on there for weeks and it was in europe too and the country charts over there went up pretty high i think it was in the top 10 over there top 10 you're right i think in other places too like you know overseas and other mm -hmm. side of the pond yeah. asia yeah. and um other places yeah exactly okay so now i'm putting all my effort into this new record and uh it's coming out the first single is going to hit oh i gotta tell you this this is kind of cool i the first song on appalachia american stories is called the coal comes up so mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of coal mining in Appalachia, particularly in the past, less of it now. But back before oil took over in the 1940s, coal was the way we heated our homes. So, you know, there were trains carrying and trucks carrying coal everywhere for, to everybody's house in the country. So um, it was huge. Mm -hmm. I, I, to make this song, I actually uh, went to a coal mine in Kentucky about to make the video, I should say. The mm -hmm. song I already had made, but to make the video, I actually shot it in a coal mine. Oh wow! You mean <laughs> went you went underground to uh, yeah. to do it? Wow! Yeah. Several, several hundred feet into this mine, and uh, it was pretty cool. It was really cool. I would say it's. It, I would highly recommend it if you want to get really dirty and bump your head a lot. <laughs> <laughs> perfect for that. There's no better place to do it than in a coal mine. <laughs> <laughs> or if you want to get some wisdom, get a little noggin in the air. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> I kept hitting my, of course, I was wearing a hat like this and I kept hitting it and going, ah. And I looked later at the hat. It had all these black marks all over it. Oh, the, my gosh. The ceiling is, you know, everything's coal everywhere. It's dusty and very sparkly, too. Mm. It's kind of like black diamonds. Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, too, if um, you found any of that, too. And um, also you talk about that first song and it kind of leads up to, um, you know, more, more others as well, too. And in, in um, Appalachian American Stories. And um, that's one that's been 17 weeks on the Billboard charts, uh, no, 11 and top 10. This one's not out yet. So it hasn't been any weeks on the bill. But the, the Dust Bowl album was on the Billboard charts for 17 weeks. OK, yeah, I, I think my associate producer kind of, um, you know, just cross up on that one. But we forgive All him right. for that, too. So <laughs> I hope this one does the same thing. That would be great. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and of course, we'll, and of course too, we'll talk more about uh, Appalachian American stories. And um, you also appeared in a film as well, too. What's coming up for Grant Moore Smith? We'll find out in just one minute. Listen to the Mike Wagner show at the Mike Wagner show dot com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mian Molson Zia Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with singer, songwriter, multi-talented, or winning Grant Malloy Smith after this timeout. 
The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host, and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing, and I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody, it's Mike from The Mike Widener Show. The Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbeam, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, where The Mike Widener Show interviews great guests, cool conversation, lots of laughs, coffee, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel, and follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We're back with singer, songwriter, multi-talented, award-winning Grant Malloy Smith here on The Mike Wagner Show. And we talked about his amazing career with being a Billboard Top 10 uh, recording artist in Music Row, um, country uh, breakout chart artist, and uh, also won numerous awards, including two Grammy certificates and inducted in the Indie Music Hall of Fame. And, of course, you got your um, your brand-new album out, which is coming soon, Appalachia American Stories. And, um, you know, once again, show it to us as well, too. And, um you know, cut on vinyl and it was just amazing too. And, um, you know, you know, tell us a little bit about more. We talked about the coal mine and, um, may, may perhaps, um, a song or two you like to uh, talk about. Oh, in the CD. That's right. It's like, you gotta, how, you how get forgot the CD. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you buy the vinyl LP, you get also a CD, of course, because a lot, everybody pretty much can play a CD these days, mm-hmm. at least in their car, unless you have a really new car, they've taken them out of the cars now too. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so this this record kind of is a labor of love, more much like the previous one, Dust Bowl was. This one's even more personal for me because my family's from uh, this area. They were not from the Dust Bowl, although I I studied it for three years, like I did this this record. So there's songs. There's two songs on here about coal. They're kind of they're very different though, and uh, and there's songs about just my love for the mountains and that kind of thing. And there's one particular song. Uh, that's about my, it's actually about my mother. It's called the red haired girl from hazard, mm-hmm. hazard, Kentucky. And, uh, that's one of my personal favorite ones. Uh, then there's, there's kind of, there's a funny song on there too, called gas station chicken, gas station chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you do any traveling around the South, you're going to find you some, some gas station chicken. Oh my gosh. And, you're making me hungry for some right good. now. Some of it's pretty darn good. You got, even though it's, don't judge a book by its cover, even though it's coming out of a gas station. Lord have mercy is pretty good. <laughs> and I have to confess too. To it, it's harder. You I have to confess. It. I actually went, been to some gas stations in North Dakota and they make some pretty darn good chicken. I mean, you got the stuff that's even better than uh Colonel Sanders and Kentucky fried. So I can mean, you got, uh, oh, oh, was it? Um, I'm trying to think like champs chicken. You get those uh, chicken fingers, chicken tenders, chicken sandwich, ham bread. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like you're eating at a restaurant practically. So, <laughs> Oh, there's also a, a, a kind of a, like a Roots Gospel song on the record. And I have a, a special uh, guest artist on there, Janice Brown. She's the Reverend Janice Brown. She's a very big uh, gospel singer back in the 80s. She had a huge hit with Rough Side of the Mountain. Mm-hmm. She's a friend of mine. She lives out in Eastern Tennessee. And she uh, offered to sing with me on it. So we, we sing together on it. Nice. And then we got some great gospel singers, uh, Kim Fleming and Kim Mont to sing backing vocals with us on there. That's really cool. It was mm-hmm. great to hear that 
that gospel choir sound, you know. Oh, yeah. Kind of give you goosebumps. It puts a shiver up your spine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. And of course, you know, I've been through the country myself. My wife uh, lived in West Virginia for 12 years, been in churches and everything around mm -hmm. that territory. And it's just like, you go to a church, it feels like you get that true gospel in you. It's just so amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I go through, every time I go to Kentucky, I go through West Virginia pretty mm -hmm. much. Oh, I can go around through Virginia and come around, but uh, it's a little easier for me to go through West Virginia. Mm -hmm. so I, I think I've been through West Virginia uh, 50 times at least. Wow, that is something. It's the only state that's completely inside the Appalachian mountain chain. Oh, that's oh, interesting. There's one inch of West Virginia that's not in the Appalachian mountains. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, of course, there's one thing I forgot to mention as well, too. You also played in big venues like Carnegie Hall as well, too. And um, that would be a great feat for you. Yeah, that was quite a lot of fun. I'm going to do it again next April. I was okay. supposed to do it again last April, but you know, we all know what happened last April. So there were no concerts at Carnegie Hall. And even it was even postponed to this year. So it was going to be last month, but even we're, we weren't ready yet with COVID. So it got put off for two years. But but uh, in April of 2022, I'll be back at, at Carnegie Hall in New York City. So nice. that, that's going to be a lot of fun. Later this year, I'm going to do um, Lincoln Center in New York City in December. Kind of a holiday themed show. Okay. Uh, that's part of the Indie Collaborative. So that, that's going to be a lot of fun to do. And that's amazing. You talk about the Indie Collaborative and uh, tell everybody about the Indie Collaborative, what's about and uh, how can they find you? It's like, you know, that's like the ultimate voice of indie music. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. In fact, you're a, you're a member. We're proud to have you. It's, it's, a, it's a group for independent, not just musicians or songwriters like me, but people that are in the music world, like, like you, like radio people, like, like DJs and bloggers, like managers, photographers, publicists promotion people you know it's for people that are in the industry as well as people that, who are artists you know so in front of the camera as well as behind the camera in, in effect or you know in the recording studio on one side of the glass or the other it doesn't matter as long as you're in the industry in some way and you're professional about your work you can be a member it doesn't cost anything to join you just have to go to indie collaborative like indie collaborative.com and there's a click the join menu and you can sign up in a few minutes you can have your profile on our on our website. Uh, we have more than 800 of our members' profiles on there. We have several thousand members, uh, but we don't put your profile unless you want us to, you know, because of a private privacy issue. But when you sign up, there's a checkbox at the bottom you can check to have you know have us put your profile on there or not if you don't want to. Um, some people don't. It it depends up. It's up to you. But we do as you as I mentioned, we put on shows and we put on showcases. We have both kinds of shows. The showcases. Uh, our members can come and they can perform. You know, it's sort of like the biggest open mic you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you have 300 people <laughs> watching an open mic. But we, we choose people in advance to make sure that uh, it's not just total bedlam. Because you can't have 300 people each play for even five minutes, it would be like a 12 hour long show. I, so, I was just going to say, I can't <laughs> It's just like, you know, five minutes, like when's my turn next? <laughs> well, tomorrow afternoon, about 4 a.m. <laughs> so we choose 20 or so people in advance. And so of course you don't want to, you know, carry your instrument around and then not play. That would be disappointing. Right. Exactly. And of course you have to have a lot of coffee too. So, <laughs> <laughs> but we have these great shows. We haven't had one since just before COVID we did one in, in Hollywood. Uh, just before the the Grammys of 2020, so la early last year, uh, and then of course we usually do one in the summer, but we couldn't do one last year. This year we're going to do one in September. We assume things will be pretty much open again, or at least enough to do a show. Mm -hmm. so that's planned. That'll be in Newport, Rhode Island. First time we've ever done a show in Rhode Island. We've normally done New York and LA many many times, and then around the country we've done Nashville and Atlanta and Chicago and. Philadelphia and probably somewhere else I'm forgetting, but we've, we've mostly go back and forth between LA and New York because that's where most, most of the people are. Uh, but we're going to do Newport this year. Nice. In September. So on our website, you can get your tickets if you, if you want to go to that one. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then we have the, the all the, uh, the, uh, the, the holiday celebration show. That's a produced show. Uh, that'll be at Lincoln center in de December. And then, uh, Carnegie Hall in April of next year. And uh, so that's what we're 
are up to. So in addition to my own personal stuff, you know, I, I do a lot of the indie collaborative stuff because I'm the co-founder with Eileen Sherman. She's my co-founder uh, and uh, she's she's in New York. She's a musical theater person. Mm -hmm. I'm a, you know, hillbilly. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, an, it's an odd couple, but we, we, we work great together and we have a good time. Mm -hmm. and, and of course she was a guest on the Mike Widener show too. Just an amazing lady as well too. Mm -hmm. So just yeah. amazing. She's an Emmy winning writer and lyricist and uh, has a lot of accomplishments to her name. That's mm -hmm. for sure. And, and, in work, and then where can people find the Indie Collaborative and also uh, once again, how, they, how do they join? Yeah, just go to IndieCollaborative.com and then click the join menu and there's a form there. You just fill it out and send it in and we'll do the rest. That sounds great. And also, too, once again, uh, where can we find your uh, Appalachian American Stories album at? Where can we find all your works at? Sure. If you go to my website, that's the best way. So it's just my three names, just like what my mother used to yell at me. Grant Malloy Smith, you get over here you right now. You get over here right now. <laughs> Give me a so whoop. You go to Grant, and then Malloy only has one L. So don't be, tr don't be fooled by that. Most Malloys spell it with two L's, but right. who knows why I only have one. <laughs> I got cheated. <laughs> or or it could be a typo as well too. I heard I heard some stories uh, on the radio too a while back that um, you, you know someone left out a name or misspelled and everything, and you try to get a hold of the nurse or whoever. And it's like <laughs> once a birth, cert birth certificate's out, you can't change it and everything. <laughs> and, and of course, you know that stuff has happened. But of course, make make it your important as well too. So you know I've heard stories, but um, I mean you got a unique story. I got to say that. Yep. If you just go to GrantMalloySmith.com, you can. You can uh, read all about Appalachia. You just follow the you know music link and to albums, and you'll see it. Or if you just put GrantMoysmith.com, or you you could put little hyphens between my three names too. That that works even better. And then you can put slash the word Appalachia. Okay. All lowercase. We certainly would do. Okay. Right to uh it. Sounds good. We certainly do so. Once again, we're singer, songwriter, award-winning Grant Malloy Smith on the Mike Widener Show. Grant, just a few more things. We love to have you back on in 2021 and beyond. You've been absolutely terrific. And um, what else can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond this, Grant? Well, I'm going to make more videos. I really like making that one down in the coal mine. <laughs> I don't think I need to go back to the coal mine because I don't have any more coal songs that I haven't already shot. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll be doing more videos. So I'm going to go back to West Virginia and Kentucky and do that. Uh, in the summer, I'm going to play, uh, there's a show called Song of the Mountain that's held in Marion, Virginia, just southwestern Virginia. Mm -hmm. In August, I'm going to play that with the band. And uh, that's done in, a, in the Lincoln Theater there in Marion, Virginia, but in front of a live audience. But it's also uh, filmed for PBS, so that'll be out, I don't know when. Uh, but it'll be in later in the year, probably, or early next year, it'll be on PBS. Wow, that's okay. interesting. We'll have to check it out for sure. Yeah, we'll do so. Far. I can't wait to do a show again. I haven't done a show since last March. Wow, fifteen months ago. I I, I think I mean, I've done shows on the internet, but that's not the same. I mean, in front of a real audience, right there. I haven't done mm -hmm. shows. Fifteen. You're welcome months. to come up to North Dakota anytime. We'll be more than glad to see you perform. So we'll do that. It will be in the summer for sure. <laughs> that be that would be great. And uh, who do you consider not biggest course. influence in your career? Who 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 do you consider biggest influence in your career? Wow, that's hard to say. I can't pick one. I can't pick one. Yeah, I have, if I had to be honest about it, I'd probably say my my Kentucky Grammy because she's the one that that played all this music for me. Okay. And uh, without her, I probably I never would have gone in this direction. I don't think. I don't think I would have discovered it. Mm hmm. And that's very good as well too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Uh, I mean, another songwriter. Or uh, it can be anything: songwriting, music, or just in general. Be yourself. Don't try to be a copy of anybody else and be super authentic. Don't forget. It's all about bringing joy and love to other people mm -hmm. with real honesty. Mm -hmm. And that's a great point as well, too. Once again, we're singer, songwriter, multi-talented and war-winning Grant Malloy Smith on the Mike Wagner show. Grant, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date. Love you back on in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been terrific. And once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact? Where can people um, purchase or listen to music, especially with your uh, brand new release, um, Appalachia? It's my website, grant malloy with one L-smith.com. And everything's right there for you. 
We certainly will do so. Once again, Grant, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor. Keep yourself to date. Love you back on in 2021 and beyond. And don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. Make sure you uh, come to North Dakota. Are you here? I will do. Thank you, Mike. Hey, everybody. My name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People Based on a Real-Life Relationship. It's just, it's well-written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers Designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress, and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds, whether big, small, established, or startup, impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.